our next section, which is BTS. <laughs> the title of this talk is Let's Listen to BTS. And unfortunately, I don't have any songs to play for you, but I would love to discuss why BTS is so popular, why I like them so much, and why actually um, listening to BTS could help you improve your English. Because as you know, Rap Monster, their leader and uh, principal, I guess, rap rapper in this group, Rap Monster is very good at English and he takes the lead in all of the English interviews. And I think his English is excellent. So we're going to be talking about that soon. But before that, I want to mention that BTS is not my only uh, favorite K-pop band. I enjoy a lot of K-pop and it was you mentioned maybe my top three picks, my three favorite K-pop groups currently. So my first is here, Blackpink. And the reason why I like Blackpink so much is that they, of course, are very beautiful. Their dancing is incredible. Um, they're well choreographed and they're very international. I believe the members are from New Zealand, Thailand, as well as Korea. And the, all of their songs are earworms for me. Their songs are so catchy. So BT, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> Blackpink are definitely one of my favorite K-pop groups. The next person I would like to introduce, this may be mm, a little bit of a strange choice or maybe not. And actually I'm not, I haven't been the biggest fan of this singer. However, uh, these days, I really like Yang Junil. Let's bring him a little bit closer to the screen. Someone asks, who is he? Yang Junil. So <laughs> he is trendy today because actually he used to be a pop singer in the 90s, in the early 90s. He had some famous hits like Rebecca. Oh, I see some comments. Wow. And lots of laughter. Stay up here. There we go. Uh, Rebecca, Dance With Me Agashi, or Dance With Me Lady. These songs are so, so catchy and lovely. And he was popular in Korea in the early 90s. Then, oh, he wants to fall. I'll just hold him. <laughs> he, excuse me. He went to America. And he was out of the public scene for a very long time. I think he kind of gave up on Discovered. And his music has been trending all over YouTube and you can see him on television appearances and in commercials. So I like him very much. And actually my mother in Canada listens to him as well. He's just such a cool, well, we have a word here, retro singer. I like that word, yes. This is unexpected. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I think that uh, he has a great story. Um, Someone mentioned that he may have a book coming out. Right, yeah. So I think he struggled with a lot of success and uh, he just has a great story. So another wonderful person. And next, ah, before I get to BTS, I wanted to give a little bit of like a honorable mention or a shout out, if you will, to a song actually. One of my favorite songs from a period of my life. And that song, is by 21 and it's called Come Back Home. And there's a little bit of a funny story associated with that song. Uh, if you can remember that song, Come Back Home by 21 debuted in 2014 and it was so trendy in Korea. And actually 2014, 2014 was the year that I moved to Korea. So you can imagine this Canadian girl just fresh in the country, walking around, trying to, um, you know, understand Korean life and get some sense of what is going on. Every store I would go into, any time I would turn on the TV, I just kept hearing this song, come back home, would you come back home? And I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, however, I indeed didn't go back home. I have remained in Korea since 2014, uh, apart from visits once a year to Canada to see my family. So that's kind of just a little yeah, personal thing, a, a song that was really pop, had a special meaning for me at that period in my life. Okay, BTS time, everybody. Now, where's my picture of BTS? Here they are. 
BTS. So we're going to talk about this seven member famous sensation. Uh, I believe the band was formed in about 2010. Um, they were they uh, got together in Seoul. Uh, since then, obviously, they've broken numerous world records. Uh, they've topped the album charts. Uh, they've appeared on famous television shows domestically as well as abroad. Um, actually, I recently saw them on an American show. Uh, it's called Carpool Karaoke with James Corbin. And if you're familiar with that show, uh, where celebrities are picked up by this driver and the driver takes them around the city. And usually these celebrities are musicians. And uh, so James Corbin asks the singers in uh, you know, his taxi or large van to sing their hits as well as the hits of others. So uh, BTS appeared on that quite recently in America and it was such a funny episode. It was really great. And I, oh, we see some people here. Yes, it was fun. So some of you have watched it. Excellent. And from that appearance, I was so impressed by Kim Nam Joon, uh, Rap Monsters English. And uh, I'll get into that in a moment. But before we do that, I wanted to talk to you about what is your favorite BTS song? I know some of you have mentioned that you don't really listen to BTS. So maybe now is a chance that you can get some good song recommendations. So. I would like to know about your favorite BTS song, and then I'll tell you about mine. Let's see. Anyone, favorite song? Fake Love, here we go, DNA. Excellent. Just hang on one moment. I have my song written down. I'll get it. Save the young forever. Oh, maybe that one I haven't heard, but I should check it out. Oh, <laughs> blood, sweat and tears. Actually, that brings me to the next thing I wanted to talk about because that's my favorite song. And actually, I wrote a little bit about that because blood, sweat, and tears is a pretty um, useful idiom or phrase, expression that you can be using in English. So in Korean, I believe that's bi dam nunmu, blood, sweat, and tears. And we use that when we're talking about putting a great deal of effort into something. So for instance, I put my blood, sweat, and tears into last night's meal, and you didn't even try it. Or we can talk about a parent putting their blood, sweat, and tears into earning a living for their children. So that's a great expression that came from a BTS song title. Some others here, Boy With Love, Mic Drop, Mm hmm Oh, we also have songs by the individual artists themselves, like Filter by Jimin. And Kona Yim says there's a band with that same name, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Oh, interesting. I should check that out. Thank you for telling me. Fire. Very good. Okay. So I want to talk now about learning English through BTS or how uh, you can learn to speak well like Rap Monster. As I had mentioned, he's so proficient in English and he does a lot of things right. Who has heard him speak English? I'm curious. Let me know. So I think it's a little bit funny how when you see him in an interview, he kind of teases his bandmates because some of them uh, maybe they're good at listening in English, but they're not that vocal. They don't seem to speak that much. He always has to take the lead in these English interviews. And I'd like to, uh, oh, good, good. I have the comments coming in. <laughs> Someone said friends. That's right. I was going to talk about that. Yes. So 
Uh, first, I wanted to say that his uh, pronunciation, it's very accurate. Uh, his vowels and consonants sound great. And he said in an interview that the reason why his pronunciation is so strong is because he learned English from Friends, the TV sitcom from America named Friends. And he didn't talk about the method that he used, although I could guess maybe how he did it. Um, but I believe that Friends could have helped him with his pronunciation, especially uh, learning filler words. I noticed in his interviews, he likes to say things like, so, like, um, he's really good at doing that naturally. And I think he could have picked that up from Friends, as well as slang. He's really good at using slang. His rhythm and intonation are really accurate as well. So, oh, yes, he spoke at the UN, right? The United Nations, I believe the Conference for Youth. And that was a very uh, inspirational mm -hmm, uh, message that he gave about young people loving themselves and the importance of self-confidence. Great, great. So everyone, what do you think? Do you think that you could learn English from a television show? Can you learn English by watching Friends, for instance? What do you think? Or have you studied English through film or by watching a movie or, excuse me, a television show? Let's see what you have to say. Shadowing, excellent, yes. So shadowing is where you watch a video and you pick, for instance, a character and you want to mimic that character. So you're going to listen and repeat to what they do. Um, the words that they say, their body language, how they move their mouth when they speak, right. It's great to shadow or you can say mimic a character when you'd like to imitate them to learn English, right? We have another comment. Yes, RM is not just good at English. He is also very good at speaking. That's right. He's the total package. He can do it all. Reading, writing, listening, speaking. Someone said Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I'm wondering, did you study with Brooklyn Nine-Nine? I think it's important when you want to learn English from a drama. Uh, that you pick one that has a lot of daily life words. So nothing that is um, something, for example, like uh, fantasy maybe or sci-fi, maybe those dramas won't be using words that would be, you know, practical in everyday life. So it's great to pick something like uh, Friends, maybe even Modern Family. I know a lot of students use that one. That's right. And another good tip is to listen without the subtitles. Try to do that as much as you can. Um, I know that some people need the subtitles for comprehension, and that's fine, but I think at first, try to understand and try to fill in any gaps of unknown words with just listening or and the context that's given through watching that, that movie. So uh, no subtitles, and then Maybe if you need to turn on the subtitles, consider using just English subtitles so you can help practice your reading. Okay, what do we have here? Let's see. One of my friends said he watched a movie 30 times again and again to learn English. Wow, that is impressive. And I am sure that that technique worked because you need to practice, you need to repeat, and that way your brain will just start to, um, I guess, uh, adapt or naturally uh, learn the right ways that we should be speaking, the right ways that words come together to form a sentence naturally. Great. Modern Family is one of the best. Great, another shout out to Modern Family. We can study using Netflix. Yes, that's such a great resource. There are so many awesome uh, TV shows and movies on Netflix, and there are so many genres, so you can definitely find something that could interest you. How I Met Your Mother. Oh, that's such a nice show too. Great. Oh, Amazon Web Service Online. I always listen to that lecture. I'm not that familiar with it and uh, I will check it out because that could be a great resource to share with my students. You, it's a Netflix drama. Ah, I am familiar with that one. Excellent. 
Mm-hmm. I can't watch the same movie more than three times. Song lyrics help me to practice a foreign language. Yes, song lyrics as well. They, those are all great ways. Great, great. Oh, <laughs> I just saw the time, everyone. So we need to end soon. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, before we end, though, I have some trivia. And this is for the students who have been listening since the very beginning. Uh, my first question is, oh, before I tell you, I'll let you know that I will try to give a prize to the first person who answers my question. Um, the prize is very small, so please don't expect much. And uh, I believe I could give you that prize when we hopefully meet in the future at a school event when the coronavirus has finished. So for a very, very small prize, my first question is, can you name my three favorite K-pop artists? Let's see. Oh, we have more messages coming in. Yes, Korean moms want their children to speak English as great as RM. Mm-hmm. Watch pop songs or interviews on YouTube. Yes, interviews and podcasts are another great way to hear native speakers in a very natural way. Winner, <laughs> Young Junil. Oh, who is this? H.N. Lee, you are correct. You named all three in the same message. Blackpink, BTS, Young Junil. Hooray! And your present is very small. Um, you get... Pororo stickers. I used to work at an elementary school and I have so many stickers hanging around. So if I ever meet you, I will give you these Pororo stickers for your effort. Good job. Um, okay, the next question is, hmm, what does the word genre mean? Who can write the best definition of genre? What is genre? Let's go. <laughs> Genre. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of comments coming in. Pororo. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're a little bit lagging behind here. A definition of genre. Kind of song. Good job. Nob J. Well done. Also, Pororo stickers. And finally, uh, this actually hasn't been discussed in our lecture. This is just maybe general knowledge, or maybe if you're a scientist, you could type it, or if you're quick at Googling. Uh, a very popular BTS song is named DNA, and that is an abbreviation. What does DNA stand for? What does DNA mean? Who can type that? I believe it would be two words, one very long word and one very short word. DNA. Who can come up with that? And bonus, who can read it? But uh, I, I won't be able to hear your voice. So just typing it is enough. D-N-A. Anyone? Yes. Oh, <laughs> we have a winner. Cho Jung Hwa? Yes deoxyribonucleic acid, deoxyribonucleic acid, very good, well done, and that is a tongue twister if you'd like to practice that tonight in front of the mirror, lovely. Okay, so before we finish up, I wanted to ask you, do you have any final questions or comments? I think that we will be ending shortly. Um, we will be having another live lecture series next Saturday. And uh, the first speaker will be Professor Kiva as well uh, at the same time. So that would be March 21st at one o'clock. And then at two o'clock, you can hear from me. And we will be discussing healthy living and healthy lifestyles. Let's see some final comments. Okay, some some thank yous, very good. Okay, great. Yes, thank you. 
<laughs> YouTube debut. All right, so we'll get going now. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for bearing with me. As I said, it's my first time ever doing this and I appreciate that you uh, listened to the very end. You're all great. And uh, thank you for spending your time today. I hope you have a great weekend. See you next time. I look forward to it. Bye-bye.